Hello and welcome to the live streaming and uh, as always let's go ahead and test out the audio. Let's make sure everybody can hear me okay. So if everybody from each one of the services can say um, that if you can hear me okay that's great. So uh, I guess we're waiting for Twitch. YouTube and, and Facebook, and as soon as we get the okay, we can move forward. So if you are on one of these services, please go ahead and uh, chime in. There's about 71 people on, so okay, cool. So Twitch is good. And how is, um, how is it in YouTube land and also on Facebook? I think Facebook has a tiny bit of a delay so we'll wait for that as well and then we'll just go ahead and get started <clears throat> so while we're waiting uh, at least i guess if the twitch folks are on they can hear what's going on basically um, this is episode i think four of this series and uh, what we're doing is we are building a um a spinner so we're modeling designing and uh, creating a, a spinner and um, what we will be doing it today is just putting some more finishing touches on the modeling and start uh, figuring out what the different parts are and then breaking it, those parts out. Uh, and then um, I think next time we'll have those parts broken out already and then we'll start um, figuring out the inside. Maybe we'll model a little bit of the inside today and then um, we'll start uh, rendering and putting this uh, thing in some sort of interesting scenario. So um, I still haven't heard anything from uh, YouTube. You guys can hear me okay. And also from um, Facebook. If you guys can hear me okay, just type it into the chat and we can move on. Alright, uh, still waiting and uh, I guess I'll just kind of start, keep an eye out in the chat. So um, if you're not familiar with this, uh, the, this series, so um, we bas I've basically done a two series so far. I've done one where we created uh, this robot. So I'll just bring it up on my Instagram. So in the first series we created this robot right here and um, that was about nine weeks. It was supposed to be eight, but ZBrush 2019 came out in the middle. So I did an episode just on some of the new things in 2019. So uh, the progression was uh, we started out with uh, the robot kind of in this condition. And then we kind of ended this iteration of it here uh, like so. And then we continued it on to another iteration, which went from this stage to this stage. And then finally, um, this stage right here and then we did multiple renders of it uh, here are some compositions of it and so that was the first series and in the second series we're doing a uh, spinner uh, from the Blade Runner universe and uh, we spent the first episode three episodes coming up with this in addition to some of the internals and today we'll be continuing it further so um, I still haven't heard anything from uh, the YouTube and uh, the um, Facebook people. So if you guys are just tuning in to Facebook or to uh, YouTube, and if you can hear me fine, just uh, type in a, uh, a note in the chat and let me know so I can, uh, I'm kind of assured that you guys are hearing me okay and I can move forward. So uh, yeah. All right, so I guess I'll uh, go ahead and start um, kind of reminding you the last thing we did last time was work on these front uh, parts. And so today I'm just going to continue that process. A uh, little quiet on YouTube. Okay, so let me see if I can uh, lift up the volume here. I think it's on the max. But um, let me see if there's a volume control over here. Is this any better? Uh, Soundwave, if you can uh, confirm that the sound is a little bit better or if it's still quiet. 
trying to do a couple of things to make it louder, but there's only so much. Okay, cool. All right, let's move on then. Um, okay, so I'm assuming Facebook is good too. They have a little bit of a delay, but if um, if Twitch and YouTube are good, I, usually Facebook is good too. All right, so here we go. Um, we're just kind of working on these two uh, pylons over here. So let's go ahead and uh, make sure that my configuration is, uh, my custom configuration is uh, is good. And uh, one other thing here is that I did a, a quick retopo uh, of, the, of the model. So I just want to make sure that I am on the uh, retopo version of the model, which I think is this one, and has some subdivisions. Yep. And then I can maybe uh, divide this one more time and so I don't get some of these chatters here, but it still doesn't matter because it's all going to be gone over later on anyway. All right, so let me choose the um, H polish here and start getting some more of those definitive planes on this part. And as soon as that's done, we'll go ahead and start carving cut lines into it. I have a little bit of a different setup from before. I reorganized a few things in my office, so I'm still getting used to this layout. And hopefully um, you can see me fine in the camera. Um, trying to uh, get it to work right here. Let me. and a little bit of this there perfect okay cool I've been on this really cool project at work just finished it this week so kind of getting my brain back together I guess All right, so now that I've kind of gotten some of the planes that I want, and again, wheels are going to come out of this bottom part, and I have to figure out some creative way for them to come out. I don't want them to just pop out like this, so um, I'll have to figure that out later, I guess. And there we go. Uh, once again, if anybody has any questions, um, or on what I'm doing, or just ZBrush in general, uh, this would be a good time to ask. All right, and uh, let's go ahead and add some more cut lines. So here I got to figure out what the um, motivation is of these things and how they would open up to uh, get repaired or things interchange inside of them. So I have to figure out where to make those openings. Uh, what resolution is the model right now? So um, I think right now it's about 193,000 polygons. It's not a lot. And it has six subdivision levels. So this is like the lowest subdivision level right here. So um, I kind of was working on it in Dynamesh mode, but then I decided to do a quick uh, topo topology of it. And then I divided about six times. So on the sixth subdivision, which is the highest, uh, the model is about 193,000 poly. So not very dense. I'm keeping it nice and loose, so it's very responsive. Uh, we will, uh, once we break it up, we can add a lot more resolution to it and get it to be more detailed. Right now it's just basically silhouette and uh, overall secondary forms maybe. Um, we got the primary forms pretty well ironed out, I think. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, the block out phase is the, oh my gee, I hate it. This is, t <laughs> okay. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. the block out phase is kind of my favorite phase, actually, uh, that said, because I get to, I mean, the kind of thing comes to life then, and after that, it's just basically, you know, um, putting in the details and getting it to look right. 
but if it doesn't work here it's not going to work with anything else so this is kind of an important phase for me because um, if I uh, like I said if I get things wrong here then it's going to cause me a lot of headaches All right so if I look at it from the front wind is going to be hitting it this way this is kind of a, uh, a pretty um, strong break here for it so maybe I can think about putting some sort of a scoop in here that will use this kind of form to power something or generate something. Obviously the lights aren't going to go here. Uh, if I get to it today I also will figure out where the lights go. Let's see if that adds to the silhouette. Um, no, I'm kind of not liking that. So again, in this block out phase, there's a lot of back and forth in the model and figuring out whether things are working or not. Come on, ZBrush. Here we go. And let's do a quick save of this just to make sure we have, if we have an issue, we'll be good to go. Yeah, and in this phase, it's a good idea to keep things as low as possible resolution-wise because you don't want to um, have ZBrush be sluggish at all. All right. So I guess it just kind of kept these two areas over here. I'll see if I can get rid of them with H polish. There we go. So once again, I have to figure out something creative to do here in the front part. Like what would be, besides lights, what else could take up the space? And, um, you know, if I can't find something in a little bit, what I will do is figure out maybe add a kit bash part later on. But let's see if I can do something like this. That maybe goes down to here. And that could be a kit bash part. Let's see if that works. Nope, I don't like that either. So let's get back again. I don't know why this undo process is really sluggish today. But my computer is doing a couple of other things in the background. So maybe that's what's going on. All right. And maybe I'll turn off some of these other things here. I don't need these on at this point. So maybe just leave it at that. Okay, so I'm kind of still not getting what I want in the front here. So I'm gonna go back to maybe about this point and just leave it there. Um, hello, side effects, how are you? I still haven't heard from anybody on Facebook. If you guys can hear me okay, uh, please let me know. All right, so I think I'm just gonna leave this this way and uh, we'll say this whole front part is one piece and kind of maybe break it up this way. Hello, how do you stay motivated at a long time and how are you motivating yourself? Uh, well, <laughs> that's an interesting question. Um, I don't know, I don't feel like I need to motivate myself. I feel like I wanna do this as much, you know, I don't think I need motivation to do it. I think I just do it because I really, um, this is this for me is, uh, is fun. So um, I don't need any motivation. I just need a computer with the stuff running on it and I'm good to go. Um, but I know what you mean. Um, and I think you mean maybe how do I stay motivated to stay on the same model and not move on to a different one? Or what exactly uh, do you mean by motivated? Like what's demotivating you? Why would you need motivation? I guess is my question. Because as far as I'm concerned, this is a really a highlight of my week when I get to just sit down and work on a model. Again, I'm not really worried about the how crisp the lines are. I'm just worried about just the general shape of this thing and how it comes together. Because later on, I'm going to retopologize all of this. 
and get clean edges and everything like that. Okay, that's looking good. So these look pretty cool. And maybe break it off over here. So this is one panel. And uh, I don't know if you recall, but we did paint this model. And I don't know if this one is the painted one or this one is. Let's see. Yeah, this one is the painted one. Did the paint transfer over here? No, it didn't. So um, I'll have to refer back to. So this is the one that we worked on before, which basically had um, the poly paint on it, which had some of the kind of the ideas that we had for where the glass is and where the doors are. So I will have to keep referring to this one for some help, but I think for the most part, most of it is pretty obvious over here. Maybe I'll just, um, there's one quick thing I should do here is uh, I'll just want to denote where the door is with a different color. So here, let me pick a darker color and just remind myself where that door was because it took us a while to design where it is and I don't want to destroy it with some other design choice. So this is the door. This part is glass. Um, okay. Just woke up feeling great, you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess. I don't know. Do you ever do sub D modeling? I've uh, been dabbling learning it, and I just like you. I don't like. Um, yeah, I do sub D modeling all the time. This last project I was on, I was doing a lot of sub D modeling. It was fun. I love doing sub D modeling, but to me, that's production work. That's like you know, kind of drudgery, in a way. I need motivation to do that. <laughs> Let me put it that way. Um, but um, but I do sub D work as well, and I will do sub D work on this thing as well. I will definitely put um, a nice topology on it um, once I get the shape done. So here I'm just basically quickly painting this part over here, and uh, you know just for kicks here, let me also paint the glass, and everything that's blue is going to be glass. So let me just do that too, just to kind of remind myself where the glass is, and it's always good to do that because you get a get a good idea of where your different uh, parts are. So a little bit of repetition, but uh, we're not really discovering in this phase. We're just painting very quickly, very roughly. Um, all right. Hello, Platano82. Thank you very much. Uh, good of you to join us again. All right. So here I just kind of quickly put in some color for where the glass areas are. So I know, and again, it's just very rapid. I probably will have some glass underneath here too. Maybe, I don't know. I haven't decided yet, but we'll work on that part later. Uh, it's better to just get this top part going. And again, I'm um, not really focusing on, if this was a production piece, I would be focusing more on um, the angle that it was gonna appear in and not caring about all the other angles. But actually I'm working on this thing as a standalone model and I do plan on 3D printing it so I will I want to build the whole thing as a model itself and not just a, a specific angle um, <laughs> it's it's for 420 perfect time uh, is that am side effects is that uh, it is am wow yikes Well, truth be told, I'm usually up uh, late too sometimes in working and uh, I have something I have to finish up. I usually stay up late too, so I'm right there with you with the insomnia. All right, let's see. I think this was glass too, so let's go ahead and add that over here as glass. And last but not least, just this little back part here I think was part of the door as well. Okay, so here we go. Now that I've got this paint on, I can very easily uh, and quickly uh, refer back to it. It kind of looks cool in this color. All right, so back to sculpting. And I'm using the Damien standard or Dam standard brush just to kind of get these little cut lines going. 
what specs do you have on your PC? Um, nothing really uh, that spectacular on this one. Uh, I'm, you know, you don't really need a, a very powerful PC for ZBrush. Um, I will be using a more powerful PC when I render stuff because I do need uh, to do some um, rendering. Um, I mean, I, rendering does require a lot more processing power, but ZBrush itself, you can do it in a pretty, um, you know, if you got eight gigs of RAM, an i5 or an i7, you're you're doing okay. You don't really need a super graphics card or anything like that. Um, I usually run 4K graphics wise, but now I'm just basically doing this in 1920 by 1200 for the stream. And um, as far as um, graphics cards are concerned, um, I just got a RTX, NVIDIA RTX card. So I'm going to be trying out the ray tracing stuff. So when we get to week maybe seven or eight, um, we'll get to see that thing in action. I'm really kind of happy that uh, I have that capability now, but I still haven't installed the card. I will be installing it over the weekend and uh, getting that going. But yeah, just to do, you know, I mean, for, for ZBrush, you know, there's always good, better, best scenarios. And for good, you don't really need a, a very powerful uh, PC. Uh, having a better, more powerful PC gives you uh, better performance. And then, of course, best is if you just kind of go out and get like, you know, seven RTX cards or something like that in your, in your PC. <laughs> Some people have that. Um, I think I'm pretty happy. I'm, I'm kind of hoping that that one RTX card will be good. Uh, maybe I'll put another one in at some point, but for now, I think um, I'm just going to see how good the uh, ray tracing capabilities are with one. I was recently at SIGGRAPH and somebody, uh, or I, I saw a laptop that was running an RTX card and it was rendering pretty fast just for a small, tiny laptop. So very exciting times. And this is just the first generation of RTX cards. I'm sure there'll be better ones along the way too. And uh, what's also interesting is that I'm seeing a lot of real-time modeling using RTX cards, using real-time ray tracing, and that's just amazing to me. And I'll probably be doing that very soon here. All right. Um, Side effects, uh, w you said ZBrush ma uh, stutters on yours, really? Well, what kind of machine are you running? Just curious. Because it's really fast on mine. I have a Mobile Studio Pro, and on that one, it's it's not a very powerful PC compared to the desktop, but it does really well on that one. I guess I shouldn't say that. It is a pretty powerful PC. I guess it's all relative. All right, so here I can probably divide it one more time just to get a little bit more resolution. Let's see what we have now. Uh, what? I should have more than that. Did I not? Yeah, I did. Let's check it one more time. All right. Right now, I've got another operation going on on this PC besides all the streaming stuff, so it might be, you know, I might get a little bit of a stutter too here. Uh, it is CPU intensive, that's right, it uses the CPU. Although, uh, one of the new things I just learned is that Keyshot, the next version, is going to use the GPU. So, GPU seems to be a big kind of topic right now. Okay. 
is it okay to 3 print your ideas for me if uh, I'm able to sculpt good? Um, knowledge infinity, I'm not really understanding what you're, tr you're saying there. Um, yeah, I mean, you you know, uh, are you saying if you can print your sculptures, if they're good, or I, I'm not really understanding your question. Maybe if you can rephrase it. All right, so now I'm working a little bit on this back part here. All right, so this is looking good kind of overall. So let's start working a little bit on the inside. So for the inside, remember, I kind of brought in that um, little piece here from, um, I'll turn transparency on so you guys can see it. I brought this, I guess it's still not very visible, so I will go to it and hide everything else. So I brought this thing in from, um, from Oculus, uh, what was the name of that program? Um, Gravity sketch, yep. And uh, so it's just basically a very loose kind of wiry version of an internal part of a car. And what I want to do is I want to use this as a basis to start out from. So, you know, there is a couple of seats here and I really only need to make one of them and then copy it over. And then there is the internal parts. So to do that, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and insert one of these Polymesh 3Ds and uh, initialize it as a box. And there is a macro to do this, but I'll just do this uh, here uh, manually so you guys can see. And basically it's just kind of creating this type of a thing. And then I just want the resolution to be one, one, and one. And let's go ahead and create it and kind of size it up. And here all I want to do is um, see j just these two parts. So I don't want to see anything else. Turn solo off. And all I want to do is see these two parts uh, like so, and then start modeling um, that internal part of the car. Um, how, inter how important is it to know how to draw when working with ZBrush? I think it's, it's good to know how to draw. I know uh, some ZBrush artists that are really amazing ZBrush artists that don't know how to draw at all. So you don't have to know how to draw but I definitely think it helps and I think it's good to know how to draw uh, because when you learn how to draw um, you also learn how to see right and that helps a lot of my students usually uh, so I, I basically teach in, in a couple of colleges and a lot of my students uh, by the time they get to ZBrush they have the fundamentals down and so they basically have had a lot of life drawing courses and um, also um, just drawing courses in general so they um, they they are usually you know better off doing that okay so I'm trying to why is this not working let's see so symmetry is on, but w okay, and let's just mirror and weld this thing. So we have a dividing line. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna just add a line here. And by the way, the person that asked about subdivision modeling, so I'm kind of doing a little bit of that now, where I'm basically adding edge loops where I need to add them. And uh, so that's good. And I'm just gonna make this thing one poly group. I don't want it to be multiple poly groups right now. Let's pick a better color that sticks out. Everybody can see it, okay. So here's kind of the basis on, on top of which the um, seats are going to be. And then I'm gonna Q-mesh this out like so. And push it down. So what I did is just mass some points there. But yeah, I would definitely say, you know, it doesn't hurt to know how to draw to use ZBrush, but also uh, know that there are ZBrush artists that do not draw uh, because this is more sculpting than drawing, really. So um, don't be discouraged if you don't know how to draw. But I would say if you can learn how to draw uh, as well as sculpt, it won't hurt. Right, so let's go ahead and put an edge loop here. 
So right now I'm just get basically creating the area where this uh, seating is going to be. And um, it's kind of creating some sort of a cage that it could go into, like so. And I'm using the um, Z modeler tool for that, which is just the most beautiful thing ever made for modeling. So if you're using sub-D modeling, I think this will help you quite a bit if you know how to use ZModeler. Right, so raise that up, bring it over. I notice it doesn't really have the same thickness, but it doesn't matter. I probably will delete the bottom level of this anywhere. Anyway, the you know the box that needs of it, I just will keep one layer uh, of it. Unless you can see it from below, I don't need it to be fully there. All right, a bunch of questions are coming in, so let me stop and take a look at them real quick. Um, yeah, you can totally do that. Um, you can you can definitely uh, print your model um, with a 3D printer. There's actually a lot of really cool 3D printing uh, plugins and whatnot that come with ZBrush. And I think some of the streams talk about 3D printing. I think Amon's uh, stream talks about print 3D printing. I don't know if Shane's does, but there are some good 3D printing um, streams as well that you can watch and they'll show you how to prepare your model and have it for 3D printing. I intend to 3D print this car when it's done. So I'm building it kind of like a Matchbox or a Hot Wheels car uh, in mind that all these are going to be different pieces that I'm going to print and then put it together. All right, so ZBrush did a good thing there and saved my progress. Put an edge loop over here. Mask this part, invert the mask. And pull this part down. Why am I pulling the other piece down? That's weird. Huh. That is totally strange. All right. So mask this, mask this. That is so weird. Okay. Yep. Side effects mentioned that both Folygon and Amon have uh, nice uh, printing lessons. Cool. So yeah, definitely watch those streams. Um, I'm not, you know, I don't even, uh, I have a 3D printer, but I kind of don't even use it. I actually, uh, there's a print lab at my school. I just give them the model. They print it for me. They know how to do it. They've got a couple of Form 2s. I think they probably have a Form 3 by now. And so um, I just basically use, oh, that's why it's happening. The pizza boxes are on. All right, so for all those of you that um, kind of didn't pay attention to what was going on there, when I was moving this down, right, to get this little bit of a lip, um, everything was going down. So when it was like this, the chairs were going down too, that outline. And I didn't want that. I just wanted that line to go down. And that's because this was checked, but I accidentally probably cl clicked on it. So this is um, what um, allows you to move everything in your scene. And I didn't want to do that, or everything that's visible. So here we go. We have that. And uh, let's see, am I going over a little bit? Add this edge loop here and kind of get a little bit of that shape. Again, I'm not really being that uh, precious with this, just getting a good kind of general shape of what it's going to look like. And then, of course, we will add subdivisions and get that. So this is the base that, that's going to be there. And uh, it looks like the chairs on this thing are pretty close to each other. I kind of would like to have a little bit of room in between them. So I'm actually going to, well, let's see, do, does that the car allow us to do that first? So let me go to this scene here. It looks like I've got room on the left and the right to separate out the chairs just a little bit. But the headroom is kind of going to be a constriction. So I'll have to figure that one out. Um, 
SpongeBob Muffin YT video from Polygon. Simple explanation on how to prep your model from here. Okay, great, cool. So if you look at the SpongeBob Muffin um, lesson uh, in Polygon's uh, streams, you can and find it. And also, if you guys don't know what we're talking about, let me uh, go in real quick here and um, bring up the. Um, so basically, if you go to ZBrush Live. Right, and you basically um, here's all the stuff that uh, is on there, and I think this should be uh, showing me right now or something else, but it doesn't matter. If you go to presenters on here, so you can see all the different presenters on here, and what you can do is um, I think Folygon, uh, I forget what his actual name is but you will see him as listed here and if you just click on their name so let's find Amen. here's Amen. so if you go to Amen's channel you can see these are all the different things and here he's talking about how to do an action figure with all the different joints and whatever I guess that's what this image is showing uh, here is talking about how to make a mold so he's uh, pretty um, pretty far down the 3D printing uh, path so uh, these would be good ones to watch and then um, Yes, DeAngelis, I guess, is, is what I'm looking for. Let me see if I can find him. Where is he? Huh. All right. He's in here somewhere. But anyway, I'm not going to take on too much time. But basically, just go to ZBrush Live or pixelogic.com slash ZBrush Live slash presenters. And they're all, oh, in the middle, I missed it. Uh, here we go, here he is, right here. Right, so here's his channel. And these are, yeah, there you go. So these are all his videos. And I don't see SpongeBobby looking things yet, but I'm sure it's here somewhere. Anyway, you can find it and you can get some ideas of how to 3D print from here. So yeah, it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of fun to kind of be able to be working on your model and then kind of hold it in your hand. It's it's a really interesting um, experience. All right, so that's kind of going to be the inside part, and it looks like here I'm blocking some of the glass part here, and that's not what I want to do. So I will have to figure out a way to show this, and let's see if I can do it right now. Here we go. And this is something that's super, super powerful in ZBrush is just to be able to be polygonal modeling and then just go right to sculpting and with just a few polygons and get kind of a shape or something that you want. So that way I just opened up this area for the people, <coughs> excuse me, for the people's feet to come down. And let me see if I can bring the people in to show you. So right, and then uh, this would be in there as well. Right, so let's go back to that the people and um, start adding this over here so I'm just basically creating the inside part as mu as well as I can here maybe I'll turn ghost mode off and I can see a little bit better but no I need ghost mode on to sculpt inside here we go so this is going to be this part over here inside the car and um, just make sure it's symmetrical and it's going to look something like this, right? And then we're going to build the seats on top of that. Yeah, so here we want to make sure we're not protruding. And I think this is pretty close by. So I'm going to make my brush size pretty small and make this, give this a little bit more room. All right, so now that this back part is done, we will go ahead and start um, adding another piece here. So um, here's an interesting trick. So remember, I started out with that cube. Now, instead of going in and creating another cube and doing all that stuff, what I do is I just go back in time to this, right? So this is a cube that I want right here. two more in here. So there's the cube right there. 
And what I'll do is duplicate that. I've got way too many tools showing here. I don't need that many to show. I'll just go ahead and duplicate that. So now I basically duplicated the cube. And then I go to my previous one. And I just go forward in time to where it was. And but then I also have this cube down here that I'm going to build into chair. So at this point, I'm going to hide the car itself and uh, start working on one of the chairs. And I'm going to work on it in the middle so I have symmetry. right? And then once I'm done with it, um, I'm going to, um, so to do that, I'm just going to duplicate this thing, bring it to the center. Ooh, that's not what I want to do. Turn symmetry off. Bring it to the center like so. And, and all I want is the chair, so I'm just going to hide all the other pieces. And uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and pick select rectangle and just select one chair. Like so. Delete all the hidden parts. And so basically I'm just going to model this chair in the center. And I don't really need to see these two anymore. I can hide them and uh, move this chair kind of in the center and start modeling it. All right, I'm going to take a quick swig of my tea here. All right, it's down. So now for the chair again, all I want is just basically the block out, and then I will create a more kind of refined version of it. So I might have the chair be empty and in one of the seats, or I might have the car be empty. So when I do that, then I will have to um, have the full chair. And it's kind of fun to model the chair. So I'll do this and um, add a couple of edge loops. Now, the person that asked about subdivision modeling, there's kind of a version of it here where I go to dynamic subdiv in ZBrush. And so I can get kind of some of the subdivision looking uh, shapes. So I wear and weld this thing and do this. So now if I press D, notice that I get some soft edges. And then I will go to sculpting and get this thing to look a little bit more like that chair. I guess I need one more edge loop, maybe two more over here. Like so. And then I'm trying to kind of emulate that shape that was there. And again, I'm just basically doing this with very low poly count, nice and loose. I don't need a powerful machine to do this stuff. And I'm just creating a nice little seat for him here. And uh, again, if I look at this thing, it's just a very simple shape, just dynamically subdivided. So that when I add divisions later, it will have that look. However, I don't need to be working on it with all those polygons. I can work on it with just a few ones, right? So there's that shape, right? Okay, and so now I need these side shapes and I'm not going to go ahead and add another cube and all that. I'm just gonna get those shapes from the side of this thing. So notice that it's got poly groups. So I'll just go to solo here. And since it has poly loops, um, poly groups here, I'm just going to go ahead and um, Q mesh so again, go to the ZModeler tool, QMesh, Polygroup All, and um, and now if I pull out, it's going to pull this out. But if I hold Control down, it's just going to separate it out like that. So now I just have a separate piece, and then I'll go QMesh that. And now I've got the side pieces, right? And now I can individually sculpt these guys to get them to look the way I want them to do. So one of the things that, that's kind of helpful at this time is I don't want to really be working on that centerpiece. So what I'll do here is um, click on that centerpiece like that. Control A, Control Shift A to get the whole thing and then split the hidden parts into their own subtool. And then now I can just work on these individually. Just make sure symmetry is on, it is. And then start creating this outside part. 
Looks like I need some edge loops for it. One there, maybe one here. Oops. I'm just going to go ahead and say do nothing for polygons. And let's add one more edge loop right here. And then start sculpting that into the shape of the chair. So I'm kind of going loosely basing this on this chair that's here. But of course, I probably will do something a little bit different and a little bit more original. Um, yeah. Tomas 3D artwork. Good morning to you. And I guess Patrick, uh, I'm, I'm not going to try to pronounce your last name, but it looks like uh, you're hearing me OK on Facebook. So I'm glad that that's working too. So here I'm just basically getting the side of the chair, loosely basing it on the thing I got from Gravity Sketch. But uh, again, just kind of trying to get something a little bit more original. Um, but it's definitely giving me some ideas of what to do. I got to ride in a friend's Porsche this week. And uh, no, sorry, it was last week. And um, it was really interesting to kind of see how their chairs were. And he had some uh, really nifty chairs picked out for his car so I uh, had a good amount of time kind of looking at it and getting some reference ideas uh, for it. All right so that looks about as good as it's gonna get so I think that's good for the side now let's work on some of the back pieces here yeah, this this um, this uh, p this piece was in Gravity Sketch, and it's really cool. Gravity Sketch is really cool to do things like this. Um, I think a lot of automotive designers are using uh, uh, Gravity Sketch now, uh, and it just really um, kind of adheres itself to that idea. And a lot of them use Alias Sketch, or um, uh, they use the Alias tools. And uh, so Gravity Sketch is very much like a vector tool for. Um, but for um, for VR. All right. Kind of liking how this chair is looking. So that's good so far. All right, so now let's do the back. And again, I'm going to do the same trick with the back, where I'm just going to isolate this piece. And uh, this time, I'm going to just QMesh polygroup island and just do this part right here and actually I kind of like this like that oh, but I'm going to lose it. Alright, that's fine. I'll just do the same trick. This and this like so and then I'll just um, go up. So cool thing is if you want to just polygroup something very quickly if you hold alt down you get to do it Let's go all the way up to here for this part and uh, add some edge loops. Again, I just want to separate this one out into its own thing. So split unmasked points, or not unmasked points, split hidden. All right, let's go to that part and start modeling it. Okay, Han, I've got some questions. Uh, I've tried Grease Pencil and Blender. Never heard of it, uh, of either of those. Yeah, uh, Grease Pencil is the same idea. And um, let's see, somebody's asking about reference images. Uh, Cyro, let's see, is there a person called Cyro on here? Oh. Um, no, yeah, I, I am using references, absolutely. So I use PureRef for references, and if you watch the previous episodes, you can see I've got plenty of references here, and I'm looking at them all the time. Uh, I don't have an internal car reference yet. I'm actually just working on this blindly. But yeah, I definitely use reference um, all the time. It's very important. I have it on another monitor, you are correct. And, um, and that's what I would say is definitely get a second monitor for a reference for all the other stuff. So I do have the reference and I keep when I keep looking this direction, I'm that's what I'm doing. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and solo this back thing out, add some edge loops to it. Looks like the 
the top needs a few. So I can start shaping it out. Maybe add a couple here, and that's good. So again, these are really simple shapes. And they are in subdivision, uh, dynamic subdivision mode. So I can go in here and just move them around with just the simple move brush. Just moving them and shaping something kind of interesting for a car seat. And it's always good to bring the guys over just to kind of see if, uh, oh, well, the guys aren't going to be in the center, I guess. So the guys are going to be useless for now until I move the chair over to the side. Um, okay. Sometimes I do like to not use reference just because it gives me, uh, you know, um, more creative control, but uh, most of the time I'm using reference because it works better that way. Maybe I'll, I will bring a guy in here. At this point I think it'd be useful. So what I'm going to do is bring both of the guys up here and duplicate this model. So these are ones I got from 1024. I actually purchased a kind of, they have a race car driver. I just purchased him and uh, Centrion it is. And so um, and just change them around a bit, but you don't really need to buy a scanned uh, model. You can, you can. Uh, there's different ways of getting the same thing. You can just get a rig somewhere and rig the person. You can probably uh, use the one that comes with ZBrush, the human being that comes with ZBrush, just make him sit down. Um, okay, so it looks like he's liking this chair quite a bit, so it's working out well. I'm going to leave him in the mix. Let's go back to that back part here. Yeah, see, this is the kind of stuff that you don't see uh, without a, a reference person in there. So it's always good to get a guy in there um, to model it because, see, this part needs to come in and this part needs to go out, which um, I wouldn't have known unless I brought him in. So I'm glad I did that. All right, so let's give him... So, you know, there's two goals here. One of them is that this chair has to be comfortable for the person to sit in. And the second goal is to have it look really cool. So here I'm just basically using transparency to sculpt through the model. And again, making sure that he is, um, that it is fitting the driver that's going to sit there. Right, looks like I can add maybe a couple of edge loops over here, like so. Again, doing this this way is pretty uh, fast and efficient. Okay, I'm going to use the inflate brush just to give a little bit of thickness to the outside parts here. Switch back to move. All right, so I'm going to solo this thing out, see what it's looking like on its own. So it has to hold out. Like So uh, I come kind of from an industrial design mentality and um, in that everything has to stand out on its own and be a good design so that when it comes together it creates a good overall design. So here I'm just working on this back part. So this is a completely different kind of way to work on doing car interiors. I don't know too many people that do things this way, but uh, I kind of like it because it's pretty fast and hopefully by tonight, so what's the time? So we've been in for about an hour so far. Uh, let me adjust my camera again since I moved. Um, my goal is to um, finish the interior today. So as you can see, it's pretty, um, you know, we can move pretty fast. I, I have one of the chairs done. I just need to do, just need to do the other one here. Uh, well, I mean, I'll just duplicate it for the other one. I don't need to make a whole other one. All right, that looks good. So now I'm just going to use that same model so I'll just go ahead and solo that out and see, do I have some 
No, I don't. So again, I'm going to use Alt to um, create some um, um, polygroups here. Just kind of creating a kind of a polygroup just on the fly. Again, Q meshing it out with Control, like so, and then just creating this piece right here. Right, and what I'm going to do again is just uh, separate this out. Split hidden. So again, notice that uh, for a minute there we saw it. This is that model, right? So it's just a really simple polygonal model, but with dynamic subdiv, it looks like this. And so what that means is when I have this one and I divide it a couple of times, I'm going to get the shape I was working with, right? Okay, so let's go over to those parts we created, turn off solo, and see what we can do with these parts over here. I should mention that when I went to the Peterson Museum, and I talked about that, I think, in the previous podcasts. Um, let me bring my reference over. I'll show you that I did actually look inside of the... Um, I need an automatically tracking camera is what I need. Maybe there's some software that does it. I'll look into it for next time. I did take pictures of the interior. So here, I did take a picture of the interior of the Blade Runner car. So this is what it looks like inside. Uh, so I did that and uh, I think I did it for another one as well. Um, I think I did it for this one too. Yeah, I did. So you can see here's this one and then here's this one. So these are two different cars that had an interior. So that one is this this uh, spinner. And uh, you can see kind of what the interior looks like. And then for this one, you can kind of see the outside of this. So I can kind of get an idea of what the uh, seats look like. And then I did take a picture of the inside. So I kind of have a little bit of reference of the inside of the car, but it's not... Um, I don't have a lot of different uh, references. I usually, like if I was doing this uh, task, I would probably have a lot of kind of car interior references to look at. And again, this is kind of, uh, you know, I'm just, you know, from a story perspective, I'm saying, I'm thinking this is some sort of a, it's not a cop car, but it's kind of a maybe a high-end investigator car or like, you know, like when they have those Ferrari cop cars, something like that, like a really fast kind of a super spinner, I guess. There's very little geometry for me to be able to do anything here, so let me just add a few edge loops. Um, turn that off. Like so. All right. Yeah, this is exactly like sub D um, sound wave. That's exactly like sub D modeling. So it's like sub D modeling, but um, it's a lot quicker. Right, so I'm just going to do nothing for this. I got enough edge loops, I think, going on. So I'm just going to get this to be a good shape. And again, I'm loosely basing this on the gravity sketch thing, but not really. Um, kind of sticking to it very strongly. I'm just, um, all right, so let's hide that driver and see what the chair is starting to look like on its own. It's, it's getting there. And usually these are separate leather pieces anyway, so it kind of is nice to have each one of these pieces as separate models. And I'm gonna try and maintain this kind of look over here. So I have to move these down. I kind of like the way this back part is doing that, so. And these probably need to bend forward a bit to kind of stabilize the person in the chair while he's flying in the air in his flying car. How much time did I spend collecting photo references? Good question. Um, you know, it all depends on uh, the project. On this one, I had plenty of time, so 
I luxuriously collected a lot of stuff. And I also, I don't collect, I don't go to YouTube a lot of times. I, I have the, I have a good library that I've built over, over time. Uh, and uh, so I get to kind of look through my library and I always look online to see if there's anything new. And, uh, but I do give collecting reference a good, good amount of time. And not only just collecting reference, but actually uh, spending time on the reference itself, looking at it, observing it, and, uh, and figuring out what in the reference is important. All right, so here again, I'm going to go ahead and do my little trick with creating a couple of polygroups here. Let me sort that piece out. QMesh, single poly, and I don't know, here we go, take these two, isolate them out, do this again, um, just say island, and I'm going to build a little piece like this over here, and separate it out. Yeah, but uh, collecting references is kind of an important part of the process. I think if you skimp on that, um, you'll have to do it later. I mean, I'm probably going to do another kind of reference hunt for this project for when we get further on to figure out like car finishes and other important things that uh, what I want to do is insert here, edge loop this way and edge loop that way. I think that a lot of artists, I, I tell my students uh, to start collecting references as early as possible and also to share them. So um, if they build a community while they're going to school, uh, they can always kind of look to a friend to give them some references as well. <clears throat> okay, tea break here. All right, so I think we've got plenty of this chair already. And probably, you know, I'll divide these into separate pieces as well because they're just going to be, you know, put cushions uh, of sorts. You know, maybe technology will have evolved so that they can uh, 3D print these pieces kind of out of some sort of foam and just have them. Which makes total sense, and I'm sure somebody somewhere is doing it. If I do a search on YouTube, there's probably somebody doing this kind of thing. All right, so now let's go ahead and make a backing for it. So I'm just going to choose this piece and duplicate it, right? So I've got a copy of it in that form, and then I'm going to take it all the way back to the way it was before, maybe at this stage. and move it behind. So again, I'm using that same piece, a, a different iteration of it, um, just to get a backing for the chair. And I will do the headpiece separately all right, so let's see what we have so far for the chair. Turn polyframe off. It's slowly coming together. I think, do I have that other piece? Where is it? Uh-oh. Did, <laughs> did I not duplicate it? I did not duplicate it. Ah, oh, that's fine. I think what I did is I aimed to, no, wait, there's this. Yeah, I didn't duplicate this piece. I wanted to, a copy of this, but then that's fine. 
Now it gives us a chance to take it to a new level. So there's that. And I'll bring this one back and do it over. So before I start getting there, I think this is where. Yeah, I thought I duplicated it, but let's make sure. Nope, did not. Oh well. I just want to make sure, okay, I do have the backing now. I just want to make sure that I, uh, this is something that frustrates my students a lot is that if they lose stuff, like even either in a crash or some sort of situation like this where they, you know, make a mistake, um, you know, I tell them that that's a whole new opportunity to kind of redo the design and nine times out of ten you do something better than what you had before so um, I guess not a good idea to just fight it just go along with it I'm going to hide this back piece right now I don't need it I'm just working on the chair but yeah I've been in scenarios where artists have completely lost it when they lose uh, lose their their, their design. It's on wave take. Thanks. Yeah, that's what I'm going for. I've watched that movie enough, so hopefully I can do it some justice. see any questions no wow we got quite a few people watching this let's see who was the person who said it was 420 in the morning uh, let's see Side effects, are you still with us or did you fall asleep? Right, so let's add a couple of edge loops down here. Now maybe he fell asleep, yay. Oh, no, he's there. Oh, yeah, he did fall, fall asleep. It's funny. Well, 4, 420 in the morning is pretty early. I mean, 4 o'clock, 4 a.m., it's like, it's the hardest time to be awake. Like, if you're awake at that time, you're definitely, you have insomnia. So you either have woken up at that time because you have something to do, or... You slept all day and you uh, let's bring our guy back. All right, so um, how are we doing on time? Uh, we're doing really good on time. I'll definitely finish that interior today. So we're going to add a steering wheel and all that other stuff too. Uh, which is kind of an interesting idea to have a steering wheel. It should more be like a flight stick of sorts. All right, let me saw this thing out. See here, I'm really fighting to get that same look because I had this thing pretty nice before. So I have to at least get it to that point, if not better. What happened to that bottom cushion? Here it is. Yeah, we want 
definitely don't want the guy to feel like he's going to fall through. Lift that up. All right. one of the things that a lot of my design uh, friends talk about is that they work on things like this for movies and then they actually see them manufactured and that's a trip. I kind of want to see the George Hull design of the spinner actually made somehow. Because the one they did in the movie is kind of a derivative of that. I don't think they use the actual model. So I guess what I'm talking about is this. Let me bring this over. So if you look at the design for the car, it kind of looks more like this one right here, right? And I think this is really beautiful design. And the one in the movie looks like this, which is a derivative of it, but I think this would be a cooler look. So it'd be cool if this was actually made. Um, I think somebody's making a, a plastic model of it. I'm not sure, but that's a really cool design. Not to say that the one they actually had in the movie was bad. Well, that was good too, but um, you know. I guess there's only so much you can do from a 2D painting, but if you design it in 3D, like I'm doing over here, uh, you can actually make the exact same model. You can just print out the parts and do it that way. And I'm spending quite a bit of time here getting this to look right. And this is just going to be the backing, so I don't know if we need to see this top part so much. And again, from an industrial design perspective, I'm always thinking about how these things would work and how comfortable they would be. Let's go ahead and take a look at the chair on its own. So, you know, I'm probably going to do some renders of the interior. So I need this to look really kind of top notch. And here, what I'm going to do is kind of add a couple of edge loops. One here kind of break that up into different pieces and I possibly can separate that out later and possibly add another one over here. So you see I'm kind of, you know, uh, giving the polygons a bit of a hard time here because they're starting to chatter up, but that's fine. Um, as long as they give me the form I want, I'm good with it. Uh, you use moving tool a lot. Geometry is getting worse. Oh yeah, so I yeah I don't I don't really care about this um, the geometry kind of being choppy like this because this is not how it's going to end up. Uh, but the way to fix it, of course, is you just retopo it. So like if I want the geometry to look good here, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it this time for sure. And if I want better geometry, I'll just go to geometry here and just uh, just do a quick zero mesh. Uh, oops, maybe I should accept the subdivisions first. So I'll go to dynamic subdiv, apply. So now I actually have this as a, um, you know, the model is this topology, but you can see how it's broken up here or whatever. And if I wanted to retain the shape, I just zero mesh it. And I get a better looking shape of that without, uh, let me solo it out so you can see it. So I get that shape, but I get better topology and it's just that simple. And if I don't want that many polygons, I just remesh it at half of that and continue. So I have that shape, again, low poly count, but the topology is a lot better. Um, All right, so here I'm just going to delete this thing that I just did because I don't want to deal with it right now. So again, all I'm doing is again worrying about the design at this point. I'm not worrying about topology. I'm not worrying about anything else um, because all that can be um, can be fixed later on. All right, so this is going to be kind of a bucket plastic thing in the back that holds the chair together. 
and we're not really going to see the bottom part of it but we're definitely going to see the side and the back so I kind of want to create a good kind of scoop for this like so and clip out the top part um what was the question? Oh, was the guy? Oh, yeah, the guy scanned. So I bought this from 1024. So 1024 is a website that sells 3D scans. Yeah, this is just a, you know, just a, a 3D scan of a, of a racer. Um, this is where he smokes his cigarette from, I guess. I don't know. And I, I, um, I think I decimated it, so it's not very heavy. I mean, it's still pretty heavy, right? Uh, but... Um, yeah, I don't know if I decimated it or not. I could probably decimate it, just not, I don't really need this level of detail right now. Eventually I'll put my own guy in there, or maybe I'll use parts of this guy and put a helmet on or whatever, but for now he's just kind of um, a crash test dummy or just some guy that's just going to sit here so that I can build the chair around the car and the chair, everything pretty much around around him. Yeah, and 1024 usually has sales, so if you keep an eye out for it, like I think I bought that thing pretty inexpensively. I knew I was going to do a lot of cars, so I'm like, I should have a driver. Okay, All right, so that's kind of the back of the chair here. Maybe I'll make this kind of big over here. Not that I'm going to see this part. Maybe I am, I don't know. Maybe I'll have kind of a separate model of the chair, but uh, it's it doesn't take me that much time. All right, so here, this part is still, I'm not very happy with. I still want it to match. Kind of the cooler design that uh, this had. So I kind of wanted to have this kind of cobra looking thing. So these will kind of support his shoulders. And again, I'm always thinking about ergonomics here, about like, you know, this is in the future, so they probably have better ergonomics and things to just kind of make All right, another quick save here. Good time for some tea. think this is good enough for now. Let's turn off polyframe and like, let's look at it kind of what, like what it's looking like. And we can see here there's it just looks really soft and pillowy, which is fine. And then we can kind of harden up those edges and add details later on. Again, that's a good thing to get reference on. So next time I'll have references. So today it's just going to be kind of doing this type of stuff. Again, getting the general shapes, and then next week, you know, kind of halftime, we'll start retopologizing things and getting things in order, naming things, and uh, getting kind of a better understanding of um, the geometry. So here I'm using Damien Standard, again, and a very kind of low poly mesh. So it's not really doing much, but it is giving me a little bit of definition of shapes. And then There is one edge loop here that I really don't like on this side thing. I'm going to see if I can get rid of it. Um, and it's this one right here. There we go. Let's see what this looks like now. Yep. That's exactly what I want. All right. Yeah, 
an SUV sounds good. Nobody's done a spinner SUV. That would be cool. Like Blade Runner Universe SUV. This is looking pretty much the way I want it to look. So let's work on the headpiece. So there are these kind of things sticking out in the back over here on this um, gravity sketch model that I like. So I'm going to try and do them, but how, like maybe separate pieces? Yeah, let's do separate pieces. That'll be cool. All right, let's see if we can peel them off of this thing. So solo it out. Mesh, single poly, and then let's go ahead and create where the pieces are that would come off of that. Let's say these ones right here, and then Q mesh them out, separate them out, Q mesh them again. Oops. Nope. What's going on here? All right, here we go. loop on this thing. Oh, let's separate it out first of all from the back. Split hidden. Get these guys. Insert. Nope, that's not what I want to do. Let's keep the do nothing, and this is what I want to do right here. Okay, cool. All right, where number of people is going up as time it's usually the other way around usually there's a drop off today it's the other way around more people are coming on all right so let's move this back to about here and again this is like a very low poly model um, so I barely have enough polygons to work on here, but that's fine. And I just kind of want to get this shape here like that. It kind of holds his shoulders in. Let's bring the guy back, see how it fits in the whole thing. That's good. And maybe this is kind of going to hold him in the chair since it's a flying car. You know, maybe this thing kind of snaps in from the back and holds him more inside the car. And here, I'm just going to go ahead and accept this. Uh, dynamic subdivision, just so I have a little bit more geometry to work with. Remac cars, what's a remac car? Is that a brand or? I don't think I'm familiar with them. Well, I'll take a look after I'm done with the um, stream. I'll take a look and see what they are. I mean, they have flying kind of people now. So they have this thing that, you know, during the French um, Bastille Day demonstration, they had a, a guy like on a flying thing. And then apparently that guy was now able to fly from France to the UK on, in the channel. He was able to kind of do that. So I wonder if that technology is going to find itself into some sort of a flying car. I mean, when I was a kid, that was something that was promised to us. Damn it, we should have flying cars by now. <laughs> All right, 
So here I'm just kind of creating that piece over here, just to kind of giving it some sort of purpose, which is to, you know, hold the guy in once he sits in the car so that when it gets bumpy, he doesn't fly and hit the ceiling of the car. And it's a cool design shape, so I'm just keeping it. There are certain things I have not kept, like this outside part I've not kept, so maybe maybe I can do it with this back piece. Let's see. E-car, do you mean electric car? I'm going to try and see if I can kind of bring this piece out more over here, just to kind of create a... I'm going to completely backtrack this thing. Yep. Nope. Not a good idea. Looks good in the gravity sketch thing. Does not look good in a ZBrush model. So we'll just keep it at that. So there are these pieces. And then um, from this, again, I will grow out the headpiece, and then we have to come up with some interesting ideas for that headpiece as well. So, um, Q mesh here, let's pick that. I think that should be enough, and then just kind of get Q mesh single poly, pull that out isolate it, make it into its own piece. And while I'm at it, let me do this too. All right, and let's separate that out. And let's kind of start building up that headpiece. So you can see here, I just started with one cube, and then from that cube, I'm just basically generating shapes from that one cube and uh, getting the chair, and then generating cha shapes from the chair to kind of make the headpiece and all that stuff. And I want this headpiece to be a little bit different than what this gravity sketch one is. So I'll kind of just start making it more look like the gravity sketch one and then kind of take it in a different direction. Um, all right, let's see, questions. Uh, how much time do you spend for creating if you did without online stream, only focused on hard, hard work? Well, one of the things that, um, I mean, you know, I usually work a lot faster than this, uh, but since I'm talking now and since it's like Friday night, I'm a little bit slower. But yeah, usually I go a lot faster than this. Um, a lot faster. If you um, if you want to watch me work, uh, you should watch the uh, ZBrush um, sculpt off, which happens uh, at the ZBrush Summit, which is coming up next month. And uh, I basically competed in that a couple of times, and uh, it's all recorded, so you can see it on uh, the Pixelogic YouTube channel. And during that, you can kind of see the speed I go at, which is pretty, uh, which I try to get to be pretty fast. Okay, so what I want to do here is I want to create another edge loop. All right, so remember, uh, again, this is like this really simple shape here. And I want to put an edge loop down here. And I want to Q mesh these things out so I have this kind of shape. Oh man. Sometimes with Q mesh, you have to figure out if you're going to remove something, you have to figure out what the best angle is to do it. And uh, I think maybe soften this thing up a bit and then do it. Here we go. Oh, okay, that's why I wasn't doing it. There's a whole other edge loop over here. All right, so let's remove this one. Here we go, that's one, and that's two. Um, yeah, so when I'm working in production too, I have to work pretty fast because I have deadlines to meet. But for the stream, I kind of sl slow things down just to kind of, you know, make sure you guys are 
seeing what I'm doing and asking questions and whatnot. Um, so side effects, wish I could go there. Where is there? Where are you wishing you could go? Right, so I kind of want something that has wings on the back here, like so, for this part. So I want him to be able to see behind him, but I also want uh, him to kind of, his head to be protected. So I'm kind of looking for some sort of a wingtip shape here to kind of bucket up his, um, and I don't know if I can do it with the topology I have, I might need to add some more edge loops for it. Looks like I'm getting it, so that's good. Uh, oh, ZBrush Summit. Um, yeah, it's it's worthwhile. I mean, you know, so you can either go to it, which is always fun, uh, but they also stream everything, uh, most everything. They stream it, so you can watch it online. It's uh, coming up soon here. So it's good to watch. It's good to be there, of course. If you are able to do it, it's always great because you get to meet everybody. Uh, I'll be there uh, most of the days, most of the times. It's kind of a highlight of the year for me, um, more so than many of the other things. Another thing that's coming up is also the um, Lightbox Expo, which I'm really excited about. A lot of friends showing there. So uh, that's another one to go to. I'm going to solo this out and maybe create a top part here. So again, if you look at it, this is how simple that geometry is, right? So this is what I'm working on. And I want to Q-mesh this up. Go to D again and see what this looks like. It is. It is. It's, it's kind of, you know, it's getting bigger and bigger. So last year it was really big. Like some of the sessions got so crowded you couldn't get in. Um, but, um, but yeah, it's, you know, I mean, it's comfortable. It's not, it's not horrible. It's not like Comic-Con. But um, give it time, I guess. I don't know. All right, so we have to kind of create more like a shape like this for his head to fit in. And then I have to give this thing a better design. Right now, I'm just basically getting the general forms of what it would look like. And then um, I'll see if I can give it some sort of design. Maybe, uh, let's see. Let me see what this looks like from a topology perspective. Let me add an edge loop here, another one here, see if I can make it a little bit more interesting. Yeah, and I think another thing that would be cool is to have ZBrush summits, like have one in Europe, have one in uh, Asia over time. I think that'd be cool too. They do some interesting stuff in Japan uh, sometimes. I'm trying to go and talk at one of them. And I should loop here too, just for kicks. And. Um, See, did I just add in some digital element? No, I didn't. Okay, cool. So one of the things you should do is, um, you know, like during these things, I don't know if they uh, Pixelogic actually looks at the um, chats here, but if you are <clears throat> watching from a certain country or a certain region, and you think it'd be a good idea to have a ZBrush Summit there, this would be a good place to mention it. Um, because if they see it, uh, and if there's enough people that are interested, uh, why not do it? That's kind of a cool design look. Just total happy accident there. Wasn't intending on doing it. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do that, though.
yeah, these horn things, I'm going to leave them in there. They kind of look cool. All right, so this is kind of what my back is going to look like, more or less. Uh, so again, let's go ahead and hide the guy, see what the chair looks like on its own. Make this a little bit thicker. And I possibly will add different pieces to this as well. But uh, yeah, I think the chair is kind of getting to a good point. So we'll kind of leave this at this point and start working on the dashboard. Croatia, yeah, there's there is a thing in Croatia. Um, there is a, a thing that happens there called uh, what was it? There 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 ha uh, there was an event. I think some of my friends went to it and they were really happy with it. Um, Jeez, I can't remember the name of it, but uh, there definitely is some sort of an event that happens in Croatia, and there are ZBrush artists that show at it. Um, um, yeah, there is. Uh, so in Europe, there is the uh, uh, there's the um, Trojan horse is a unicorn. I guess is the name of it. It's like an event that happens in Malta. Uh, and that's a good European thing to go to. I think there's a, a couple of things that happen in the UK. Um, and there's a lot of ZBrush artists at these things, so uh, kind of keep an eye out. I mean, it's not the ZBrush Summit, but a lot of the people that show or, and talk at the ZBrush Summit usually go to these things as well. And if you guys uh, do go to those events, I mean, ask them to, uh, like, if you, if you want to see me there, uh, ask them to invite me. So I would love to, I'd love to go to Croatia, I'd love to go to Malta, all these places, uh, and meet some of you people in person. That would be great. All right, so there's kind of the head thing, and we'll add some pillow. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Another happy accident. Um, so we'll kind of do it maybe like this. Maybe I can add one more here. Wow, look at that. That's what I love about ZBrush is like you're working on something and then all of a sudden you do some, you know, you make a, a move that you're not expecting and it just does something really cool for you. So here, we just kind of created a really nice design in there. And I'm going to kind of support it on the inside here with the neck as well. All right, quick save there. How are we doing on time? We've got about 20 minutes. Yeah, that's plenty of time. We can do the dashboard. Um, well, side effects, if I do, I will definitely, I mean, I don't know what the best way to do it is. I guess I'll go to Twitch, find this uh, chat, and then see if I can uh, send you a direct message. Um, oh, yeah, so um, the question is, will I UV map? I don't know. I probably will UV map some of the parts, but not the whole thing. If I was working on a project and uh, they did want to put uh, specific things on the model, then I would UV map it, yeah. And I, I probably will UV map some of this stuff. Probably not, you know, do an intense UV mapping on it, but I'll probably use like uh, UV Master, which does a pretty good job, pretty quick job on that. And um, I don't know if I'm going to load any of these parts into Substance Painter. I haven't decided that yet, but um, I think when I load this into Keyshot, there'll be enough car paint stuff. Uh, Keyshot does really nicely with car kind of uh, materials, so I'll just use those materials. Um, well, what was that sound? That's interesting. Um, all right. So I want to remove this piece right here. Let's see if I can do it. There we go. And then I want to this forward. There we go. That's the headpiece like that. And I might do the same designs on the chair as well as all these other parts. So doing some last kind of minute things here. Uh, 
on these pieces and then we'll kind of call the chair kind of the overall shape of it done for now and uh, we'll move on to the dash. Okay, so I'm going to basically um, take all of these and for now just merge them all into one piece. So here's that piece. So I'll just go to the top here, make sure that this is the last one, and then just merge these together into one. And so I just have this whole chair as one subtool. And then what I'll do is duplicate it. Keep this one in the middle. And then what I'll do is take this one. Uh, I actually don't even need this thing anymore either. I'll hide that. So what's nice is here, um, I have a parts list. So that centered one that I created, I can move into the parts list. And this one here, this piece, I can move into the parts list, into that folder so I don't have it. And then I just have this chair. And now what I got to do is match these to here. So I'll just move the chair to its place here, like so. And uh, then I will just use mirror and weld. Oops. Turn off symmetry here, move this over. I'll just do it on the side. I know it, it works on both sides now, but it's an old habit. Then just mirror and weld it over. Now I've got the two chairs, right? So now let's build the dashboard over here. So one of the things I didn't do here is I didn't leave, leave enough room in between the chairs for an island, but I can just build that one out. So here I'm going to go ahead and um, append a uh, star like this, Polymesh 3D, and then I'm going to do a different. I'm going to do it differently this time around. Again, there are different ways to do something, so I'm going to go in here and create a polycube like so. And I don't want to have this many divisions, so that's good enough, like that. And Shift D, there's a cube in there now. So is this cube kind of bigger than everything else? It's pretty big. Wait, what happened? What did I replace? <laughs> I didn't want to replace the chairs. Uh, so let's go ahead and take this guy, move it up. And do that over, polycube. There it is. And then just move that up. So what I want to do is create an island in the middle that kind of comes out from the back. Kind of that will be the console that have has the side stuff on the and not too thick about there maybe like that there we go let's bring the guy in actually I don't need this guy anymore either I can move him to the parts list bring these two guys in and there's that island looks like it's looking perfect. Guys look like they need to be further apart. Let's do that. There. All right, so now I just want to make sure that with all the stuff that I added, let's bring the car back to see if there's any intersections. I'm sure there will be, but that's fine. Oh, maybe not. Look at that. Let's see what that looks like inside. So there's that. There are the chairs inside, and this is what they look like. Looks like a little bit of them is kind of touching the back here, but that's okay. We can move the chairs down just a little bit here to be there, and then bring the guys back. So yeah, it's uh, coming along well. We'll hide the car for now. And continue to work on this inside part. Right, so here I want to add an edge loop. About over here, Q mesh this up. And bend it out this way. Make sure symmetry is on. Whoa, go away brushes.
Alright, let's see here. Why is it? Okay, that's why I don't have ghost mode on. Alright, let's just move this over here. I'm just kind of creating a, an island here, a side panel for them. Um, Alright, so that's good, kind of a good placeholder for that. And maybe I can add one more edge loop here and get a little bit more to work with. Right, so we'll put some goodies in here later on, but for now I just kind of want the general shape of it to be there. And then let's go ahead and build some other parts here. So we got to build the dashboard. So here again, I'm going to use that same trick where I duplicate this part. So I've got a copy of it, and then I go back to this part and bring it back to the cube and move that cube forward to get the dash. Right, so I don't really have a, a, a dash kind of in, I think there was one in the gravity sketch model, but I destroyed it. So I'm just basically going to create my own version of it. So there's that. Let's create a symmetric line here, go this way, do this. Oh, was the heel popping out? Oh, okay, good, let me check again. Well, the dash is definitely popping out, but let's see if uh, I don't see anything popping out. It looks okay. Let's see the guys. No, they're contained, and the chairs are contained as well. So we're good. Okay, so let's move back to the dashboard here and hide the car. I know it's kind of cool to look at, but we'll look at it quite a bit later on. And um, again, if you guys have not seen the beginning of this, you can always go back. These videos are saved, so you can go back and watch them at your convenience. And you can watch this one again later if there's certain things you didn't catch. And then just tune in next time, and if you have any questions on any of it, you can ask me. So there's this, like so. And here I'm just going to go ahead and take a look at the reference a little bit to see what they have and they have a bunch of like computer screens and whatnot so that's cool there's a flight stick and a steering wheel for a for when it flies and when it is there so we have to kind of think about where those would be i guess i need to pop something out from the center area too which maybe i can make into one piece let's see um no i think i'm going to keep it separate so here's kind of an a, just a, a rough uh, version block out of the dash and again I'm going to bring the car back just to make sure it's not popping out of it and also since this is going to be visible since this part's going to be glass over here I also need to make sure that I'm creating an interesting backside of the dash as well for a lot of the cars that I work in production uh, I don't show the back because it never shows up um, it's usually covered up, but um, here we're actually going to see that this part, so I actually need to put some thought into it. Because this is going to be glass over here, so we're going to totally see inside the car when we're working on it. So again, I was kind of planning on, on finishing this thing in eight weeks. If it takes nine, that's fine. There's going to be there's plenty of work still to come on it, but uh, you know it's pretty ambitious to do a full car and the interior as well. But uh, but it'll be fun. All right, so we got about ten minutes to go. I might go a little bit over today too, if you guys don't mind. Um, all right, I don't want to make sure I'm not Q-meshing anything right now. I don't want to be adding more geometry. I just want to be 
getting some sort of a good dash shape over here and this is looking good like so all right so let's build that middle thing down below That. So again, I'm going to do that same exact trick where I duplicate this, so I have a copy of it, and then I go to the previous one, take it all the way back down to where it was a cube, like so. And then move that down to where, let's see the car, that middle island is going to be right there. And this is kind of where the flight stick would be and all that good stuff. So, so again, just really blocky, really simple, just kind of figuring out where things go. Uh, that's good right there, maybe a little bit shorter, maybe forward. And again, we're going to see this thing so from the car. So let's go ahead and bring the car back. Yeah, it's going to be in this front section. I'll probably have some sort of a interesting thing that is in the front of it. But that's kind of where that's going to be. Right about there. And then let's go ahead and take this up. Um, Qmesh, single poly, take it up like that. And maybe bring a little bit of it forward like so. And then let's get this thing, oops. mirrored and some sort of a section like that. All right. Um, I can initialize the, um, okay, hang on, uh, let me see. A um, bunch of questions here. How do you do window hole in a closed geometry? Um, well, there's different ways of doing it. Um, I'm not going to go over it here, but if you watch the next few uh, ones of these, I will definitely uh, be showing you how to cut different windows or cut pieces into it. I'm, th I'm thinking you're asking about how do I get windows in this piece, and uh, I will not I'll not be cutting these pieces out. I'll just basically be retopologizing on top of them to get the different pieces. Um, so, uh, Cairo Corp, that's how, uh, that would happen. And then let's see, uh, yeah, I'll probably use live booleans. I haven't used them so far, but I definitely will. And, uh, um, I could use live booleans to cut out shapes, definitely, but I probably will retopo on top of this. Um, I can re-initialize a Q cube from a duplicate. I could totally do that as well. Uh, there's, you know, there's a lot of different ways of, of doing things. Uh, some way, some things I prefer to do than others, uh, but, so, you know, I always kind of mix it up. All right, so let's get bring this up here, this way, this up this way. Like so, okay, so again, you know, very loose and... Uh, just kind of getting where everything is. So that's good enough for that. And um, steering wheels and stuff like that, I probably will bring those in from uh, exi existing kit bash parts. And if I don't do them from kit bash parts, they're pretty easy to, to do. Um, so we'll do a steering wheel later. But for now, I think this is coming along pretty good. I think I am going to actually end it at two hours. Uh, but we will continue it again in a couple of Fridays. Now, there might be a Friday I don't do because it is going to be uh, that thing that I told, talked about, the Lightbox Expo. So uh, stay tuned. If you are going to tune in, always go to the schedule. And what I mean by that is uh, there is a uh, schedule of um, presentations on here. So if you go to ZBrush Live here, I think they do have a schedule like right there. 
right so go to the schedule and so here it tells me that you know tells you that I'm doing mine here and there are all the other ones so if you go to a specific date here and you don't see me uh, on that date that means I'm gonna, I might miss that Friday um, but uh, luckily the fr the uh, ZBrush Summit does not fall on one of the Fridays so I will be doing one before the ZBrush Summit and one after uh, the one after should be fun because I can talk about the ZBrush Summit and um, and then the, the you know and then the one before I'll probably be super excited about it so um, so yeah um, so kind of keep an eye out for that I might be missing one week because of that but maybe not who knows we'll see All right so I think here I'm going to kind of make sure that the guys see outside the dash and they can. Let's bring the car back up to see what that's going to look like from inside and that's looking pretty cool. So yeah so we've got kind of a nice a dash built for the car so let's go ahead and take a look at all the different pieces we put together here. So we got this back part, uh, we've got the two seats, so I need transparency on or polyframe. So we kind of have built a really nice little dashboard and area for this internals of this car and uh, we'll be developing those further. And again, here it depends on what I want to do. You know, like if I want to spend a lot of time developing this inside part, if I'm going to actually show it, or if I just want to do enough for it to kind of look good when I look at it from the outside. So that's a decision I'll have to make uh, depending on how much time we have and all that good stuff. So uh, again, I intend to finish this thing in eight weeks, uh, maybe nine if something comes up. And, um, and then if we'll determine at that point if we want to continue certain things further on or if we want to just kind of end it there. And I'll probably be taking a little bit of a break after those weeks are over. And then I'll come back and we'll do a whole new project. Uh, for the next one, I'm thinking of doing some sort of a mech, but we'll see. All right, so uh, here we go. I guess uh, this is kind of a good time to stop. And I want to wish all of you a good day, good good night, good morning, whatever you have. And uh, we will meet again in a couple of weeks. Let me see if there are any last minute questions. Um, Okay, yeah, great. Um, thanks, everybody, and we will see you again in a couple of weeks. Cheers.